Hello, and welcome to the Electrum training video series. This video will cover an overview of how to create and configure a test template. If you're following along from the hardware setup video, I'm continuing from where we left off. At this point, we have a hardware setup that incorporated all of our factors and devices. Now we want to configure our test parameters. To begin, click on Test Templates in the left sidebar. In this screen, you are presented with all the test templates automatically created by Electra's configuration wizard. However, for this training video, we will create a new test template. Click the plus sign in the bottom left hand corner and select a template type. In this case, we will select EMI Electric Field Strength. Now, we must select the hardware setup that we just defined. To do this, click the three dots button and select your hardware setup from the list. Now let's start from the top. Under General Settings, we can change a few parameters such as audio demodulation type and the level range for graphics. If you previously built a report template, you can select it here. For more information on report templates, please refer to the specific video on report templates. Also note the Limit Lines tab within this section. Please be aware that these limit lines are for display only and no data will be analyzed to these limit lines. Under Measurement Flow, there are several blocks that you can click on. The first thing to know is that you can enable or disable each block by clicking the checkbox next to each icon. Maximization, zoom, and adjustment can only be performed if you will be performing a final measurement. To configure each block appropriately, select the icon to make it active. For example, when I click on Overview Measurement, you can see the Flow Details section is populated accordingly. Let's cover this overview measurement first and we'll work our way through the entire block diagram from left to right. Now that we're in overview measurement, let's look at the flow details. In this area, you can define one to four detectors depending on the capability of your measuring device. The ESW44 receiver that we're using supports up to four detectors. If you need to repeat the measurement more than once, you can click the repeat measurement checkbox and select the amount of time you want to repeat the measurement for. If you have multiple frequency ranges defined, you can make each frequency range active or not. In our case, we only have one range and we want it to be active. You can also edit the frequency range, so we'll go ahead and change the stop frequency to 1 GHz. We also need to select the limit line. You can do so with this drop down box. The hardware setup that we did is shown below and should look familiar. Then below that is the settings area. There, we can set up parameters specific to our EMC standards, such as operating mode, scan mode, detectors, filter type, measurement bandwidth, measurement time, input attenuation, and preamp settings. Now let's move over to the accessory settings tab. In this area, we can define the priority for how Electra loops through azimuth, height, and polarization. The way it's configured now, azimuth is the first priority, followed by height, and then polarization. If you want to change the priority, select one and then use the arrows to move the item up or down the list. For azimuth and height, the mode, range, step side, and positioning speed can be defined in step mode. In continuous mode, the step size is set, but you can still change the positioning speed, which is the time between positions. The measuring speed is how fast the turntable turns while taking measurements. On polarity, you can check the checkboxes for horizontal and vertical if you want to perform both. Toggle the button under parameters to determine which one will be measured first. Moving back to the block diagram, the next block we see is spectrum overview. This just shows that all the previous measurements have been combined into one overview measurement since we have 182 positions. The next block that we see is data reduction. Under Data Reduction Settings, there's a radio button to pause measurement flow for interactive data reduction. This is used after the software has done its own data reduction. You can add or remove critical frequencies that will be measured as we move forward with the measurement flow. In the block diagram, you see a block called Peak Search. This function, when enabled, will perform a peak excursion across the active frequency range to determine the number of peaks you define under Number of Maxima that are more than x dB down, where x is what you define in the peak excursion text box. In this example, x is 6 dB. For more information, refer to the help file. In the block diagram, you also see subrange maxima. This breaks up the frequency band into equidistant or individual frequency ranges and just searches for the top two peaks within each subrange. 
you can select how many subranges and how many peaks you want to search for. Acceptance analysis will take the limit line you select below under the acceptance table window and will use that plus the acceptance offset to determine if the data should be used during the rest of the measurement flow or not. Lastly, maximum limitation gives you the ability to limit the number of peaks that you want to analyze in the rest of the measurement flow. Critical points is not a selectable icon and it represents the list of frequencies that will be analyzed in the measurement flow. The frequency list icon below can be enabled to add any additional frequencies of interest such as clock frequencies. Assuming you do not use a final measurement, the only remaining block is final results. If you do want to use a final measurement, you may opt into maximization. This block helps to hone in on the spot in azimuth, height, and polarity where a point of emission might have occurred. These blocks can be programmed the same way we did earlier with the overview measurement setup, including stepped or continuous mode, range, step side, and speeds. You may also opt into a zoom measurement. You have a settings area just like we did during the overview measurement setup for things like measurement bandwidth, detector, and measurement time. You also have a separate zoom settings tab where you can set up how you zoom in on the frequency of interest. You can choose the amount of frequency coverage you want to zoom in on in three different ways as you can see here. Lastly, you might also want to opt into adjustment. You have two options, adjustment with full range, which means you sweep everything, or adjustment with predefined range, which is where you can set a certain amount of azimuth or height that you want to sweep. Then you get to final measurement. You have another option to pause before final measurement where you can once more add or remove critical frequencies to be analyzed during the rest of the measurement or not. Again, you have a settings window like you did during overview, but now you can only change the time per point. All of the data taken during the final measurement stage is the final results represented by this icon on the far right hand side of the block diagram. This concludes the training video on creating a test template in Electra. If you're following along, the next video will be executing a test.